Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain Appaloosa. So, let's explain about Appaloosa. Now, as you know, Appaloosa is what I like to call a problem in this game. It's a card I feel that definitely needs to go into the ban hammer, definitely needs to get banned. It's one of the biggest issues that I have, you know, with Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think it's a card that needs to go. It's the culmination of negation going too far. It's the end result of all the bad things in Yu-Gi-Oh! But how did we get to this point? How is it that Appaloosa is a problem? Why is it a problem? To do that, we need to go back in time. Go back. Back to the very beginning. Back to where it all started. So let us begin by going to the beginning of Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, and so back at the very beginning, we start with Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! as you know, the quick history lesson started in 1996. And when Yu-Gi-Oh! first started, we were at a very basic point at this time period. We just basically battled with our monsters. We had monsters and we battled. The most we ever did was destroying cards with cards such as Mirror Force. Concepts were very basic. Bat Facts. You, you battle me. We each start with 8,000 life points. There was nothing really complicated about these things. It was only when we hit to midway of the GX era, at this time, Konami introduced the archetype known as Gladiator Beast. And this was an archetype that changed everything. Everything changed, and all of a sudden, concepts that we were introduced into the game that were not there before. Concepts such as disruption. The fact that you could fusion summon without using polymerization. You know, contact fusing was introduced. Counter traps as a concept was introduced into the game. Sure, we had that before, but the fact that you could use counter traps to counter your opponent. This was a concept that didn't exist before. So the fact of using counter traps to counter your opponent. We have uh, an archetype that is consistent. You know, archetype that gels with, each, with itself. You know, consistency. Um, recursion. We have countering. We also have um, just synergy, uh, archetype synergy. Again, these were these these are whole new concepts that we didn't have in the game before, and these were concepts that would be built upon later. Anyway, Glider Beast introduced a lot of huge and uh, re uh, big ramifications to this game that Konami introduced, and it's very important. But it is because of Gladiator Beast that we culminate into the uh, disadvantage or the really end point of Appaloosa. But be and anyways, we'll, I'll get to Appaloosa soon as I speak into this video. But just know that Gladiator Beast is where it all started. Okay? And so let's move on from this. And so, you know, we've talked about Gladiator Beast introducing all these uh, concepts. But then we go and the game trudges on. We have archetypes, we have consistency as we've talked about earlier. But again, Yu-Gi-Oh! again is still a very basic game. And while we do have counter traps again, apart from Gladiator Beast, the game pretty much was pretty slow and was pretty simple as it was before. Negation was not a thing. I mean, you have to consider that, you know, during this time, apart from Gladiator Beast, there was not really the concepts of negation wasn't really there. While yes, we Glider Beast had their own counter trap and they could search, they could recur things, they could do loads of things, but things were pretty basic, things were pretty cool. Now also remember that before um Gladiator Beast during in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh!, we did have a hand trap called Karibo, but Karibo again was not used in our competitive scene much. Hand traps weren't used in our competitive scene. In fact, we even had during early GX here, we had DDD Crow. But again, the aspect of hand traps were not really in introduced or really uh, implemented into our game because this was not an aspect that Konami really um, put in for us. Now, we go into the beginning of the f Synchro era or, or rather 5Ds when the anime came out and whole loads of things change with Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole. We have more archetypes that are becoming that are now made similar to Gladiator Beast. 
we're having the aspects of counter traps be there special summoning is now being more implemented into cards and into archetypes and into just card creation economies pumping out more and more and more and all of a sudden the game has started to be uh, become a lot faster than it was during the GX era. In fact, it's in this era that it is heralded. Most players herald the the 5Ds era to be the golden age of Yu-Gi-Oh. But anyways, while we were hitting the golden age and Yu-Gi-Oh was at its peak at this point, as as uh, me as someone who's been playing this game at this time, and we can all agree with this, there was a card that came out, the card that changed everything. The card that redefined hand traps and the card that would cement what negation would mean in Yu-Gi-Oh. This card is the infamous Maxi. Maxi being introduced in midway of this of 5D's era changed everything. Sure, we had hand traps. We did have the introduction of Effect Veil at this time, and it was used in uh, the competitive scene. It was part of the game, but... Remember, Maxi changed everything. Maxi completely blew uh, our minds, and Maxi was a whole new concept that we didn't know before. Maxi was the first time we had a card or a hand trap that you could essentially activate, and it would tell your opponent, or rather, it it induced this fact uh, point in the game, where your opponent special summons. And you would draw cards. It essentially said that activate this card and your opponent doesn't do anything. Because it was the feeling, this feeling of oppression, this feeling of stopping your opponent with just one card. Maxi brought this out. Maxi is the beginning. The beginning of oppression negation. Before Maxi was released during the... 5D's era, we did have negation, yeah, but ne- it was negation of convenience, negation that was was just a part of the game, but was not a part of negating. You know, it, negation wasn't part of stopping your opponent. It was a part. It was a part and parcel of the game. If that makes sense. Like for example, we had cards like, you know, the Gladiator Beast, as I talked about earlier. These were uh, cards or concepts that we had uh, in this game but they were not designed to stop your opponent they were a means to an end they were not there to remove your opponent entirely or really to or in effect to say that your opponent can't play at all this is important it's very important as maxi sped up um the introduction of negation it really hammered home what negation was going to be for Yu-Gi-Oh going forward. Now, as I talk about Maxi, loads of things changed during the midway point of 5Ds in the 5Ds era of Yu-Gi-Oh as we play the game. Maxi introduced this concept into the game, but it also introduced and it was also something that Konami was pushing for the player base. All of a sudden, we were having more we were starting players we started to use more hand traps were being used into our game. Um, Effect Velo is being used more. Uh, DDD Crow was now creeping into some usage. And the aspects of stopping your opponent with one card, it was essentially, Max introduced this concept, and a concept that we still use today. One card to rule them all. One card to stop them all. One card to win them all. One card to do everything. This was a start of oppression negation. Very important. Oppression negation is a, neg- is a concept of negation, really, that meaning if you can stop your opponent with one effect, you stop the entire turn, meaning that you can basically win with just one effect. Very important. Now, again... Things were speeding up, and we would enter the the X Y Z era, the Zexel era, and again we were getting more. We we didn't really. I think during this point, hand traps were still there. Maxi was still in the game, and I think it was midway of X Y Z era. Konami banned Maxi. 
things were still pumping out in Konami's end. We were having more archetypes that were having that were more consistent. We were having more negation cards being uh, printed by Konami at a rapid pace. All of a sudden, um, negation was part of our game. And decks were getting faster and faster and faster. More hand traps were being uh, made, but there were more hand traps, such as Ghost Ogre. Ghost Ogre was a hand trap that was introduced during, again, late um, Synchro era. But again, things were going on the up and up. And during the XYZ era, we did we have really new hand traps? No. Negation was part of the thing as we, we started to see more monsters that Konami was creating. More monsters such as Cyber Dragon Infinity. More cars that, could, that were Omni-Negates. XYZ era really introduced to us a negation that could negate everything. Before the XYZ era, we did have negation. However, it was a negation that was tied to archetypes. It wasn't really generic. I, we can really say that XYZ era was the first time, rather, that we started to get negation that was generic. Ne negation that you could split apart in every deck. This genericness, this free uh, thinking of cards, of just putting stuff everywhere, we can really say was really planted, the seed was planted here by Konami. And it is something that we would see later on in future formats and in future installments of the game that would become a serious problem. But for now, we were seeing this idea, this concept of just putting stuff out there, just making stuff free for everyone to use, was being introduced into the game and was going to be, was not really seen as a problem. We would see about that sorely later. But Remember to Konami, money is all that matters. And things were needed to slow the game down. And so, as we enter early Pendulum era, Konami sped up the game even more. The game was getting faster and faster. Monsters now, special summoning was made even easier and even faster. The game got to the point where we, for the first time, we had a tier zero deck. Truly, nothing was off the table. And indeed, Konami had seen that the game was a bit too fast and so decided to go back into the well of hand traps really and it was at this point we would they would release a hand trap this was near in between you know the the mid uh point of the mid years of midway in the pendulum era we started to introduce a hand trap that we're all familiar with today the hand trap that is considered the best hand trap of all time, Ash Blossom. Indeed, Ash Blossom is a card that came into the game designed to save the game, but not. But Ash Blossom didn't save the game, but propelled negation to its natural end point, propelled it to the mess that we're in at this point. But before we get to the end point, we must understand why Ash Blossom was created. Ash Blossom was created because during Pendulum Era, Konami had seen the error of their ways. After all, we had, we, they did during Midway of Pendulum Era, created a tier zero deck, and things were not looking good on the Yu-Gi-Oh front. Things were looking really, really abysmal. Things were looking bleak. The future was looking absolutely atrocious. Um, with Konami making some memes or making some self-aware references in the anime, especially in episode 1 and 2, and, and uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! player base complaining, as they, would, as they would do in the virtual world and in the real world, things were becoming a serious problem. So they needed to address the elephants in the room. They needed to address the special summoning that they had now created and the... Um, the speed up of the game that they now created, obviously from a monetary perspective. They needed to address the game's uh, players' concerns, the game's game-breaking concerns that were in the game. So Ma uh, Ash Blossom was created to address these concerns, was created to really s slow cards down. And indeed, there was a time that it did do that. But because of the creation of Ash Blossom, well, negation had to evolve. And 
the aspect of Maxine that we I talked about earlier in this video, well, players were starting to look for cards that could do just that. And and there were a lot of cards. Now, there were a lot of uh, generic negates that were made during XYZ era. And of course, players, well, they started to use those cards. And heading on to now the early Link era, we're starting to see a lot of the generic uh, negates or the generic cards that were made during the XYZ era starting to creep up in this game and starting to pose serious problems. The generic negates that were created to, that were meant to be diverse, create diversity, create all this creativity, instead started to make Yu-Gi-Oh more predictable, started to make it a bit more, you know, formulaic. And in the end, combo, co combo deck started not only to get even faster than before, and Konami seeing the problem with pendulums obviously introduced the concepts of Link to again slow the game down. But here's the thing, they soon, real, um, they soon realized, and they started to also print out at this time during uh, more hand traps than ever before. But the player base was complaining, and no one was happy. Players weren't happy, Konami weren't happy, no one was happy, and so there was a problem. Okay, and we, and as I've said, there was a problem. But why was there a problem? It was because there was a lot of hand traps. Now, players were starting to complain, especially during the midway of a midway link format that we were that you know the game was in was that hand traps were dominating everything um that you could simply activate an ash blossom and all of a sudden your opponent's turn would end um ash blossom was really a point of contention and because ash blossom and just various hand traps that were being introduced into the game were a point of contention konami needed to appease players needed to try and fix um, the problems that they themselves created and obviously they'd created so many um, generic negates again remember from the uh, Zexel era that we have that we've uh, previously mentioned and we just have loads of negates lying around that were meant to help or heal the game instead of be instead became the game's worst enemy and so well there was a solution that needed to be made there was something that needed to be made that could solve everything one negate and it all comes down to maxi one card to rule them all one card to win them all one card to rule them all and it was with this concept with an upgraded version of maxi that appaloosa was created now appaloosa's creation is only the natural conclusion i would say for negation it was always going to come to a card similar to Appaloosa was going to be created at this point it was only the natural end step and so with Appaloosa's creation we begin to see not only the negative sides of Yu-Gi-Oh but one of the biggest issues that Yu-Gi-Oh has at this current point in time Everything that we hate about Yu-Gi-Oh, every, every aspect of the game that everyone complains about or everything that is wrong with the game, Appaloosa encompasses that all in one card. And as I have uh, sped through the history of how we got to this point, we must first ask ourselves, why is Appaloosa so hated and why is it so bad? The reason is, is that it doesn't bring anything positive to the Yu-Gi-Oh table. Now, what do I mean by this? The Yu-Gi-Oh table is essentially, what I like to talk about is cards that are released by Konami that bring something positive to the game, that bring creativity and all manners of things. Hand traps, for example, like Ash Blossom, Ghost Ogre, and all kinds of other cards that I've mentioned throughout this video, bring a positive aspect to the game. They have a singular purpose and they fulfill that purpose right they're not just there for the sake of being there hand traps design rather their whole concept was to be implemented 
when formats are starting to get a little bit broken and uh, players are starting to do a little bit of unfair things. Hand traps were designed by Konami, in, in my understanding rather, they are there so that to tell players to behave, to tell uh, when you see Ash Blossom in a deck, really Ash Blossom is there to say is that you as a player, you're starting to do some very unfair things, you're starting to be naughty, I need you to behave. The same thing with Outdraw and Lockbird, the same thing with uh, Imper, whatever. Hand traps are designed to really rectify rather or to punish over, you know, disgusting uh, strategies or disgusting behavior that we see from archetypes, that we see from decks that appear in the game. Now, the issue is with Appaloosa is that while hand traps are, were designed to punish or rather to stop negative play, Appaloosa promotes negative play. It doesn't bring anything positive to the table, right? So, let me let's continue on and talk and and give some more examples of some uh, some negation cards that bring something positive to the Yu-Gi-Oh table. Okay, and so one of these cards I'll talk about is again Boral Sword Dragon. So. You look at Boral Sword Dragon and then we ask ourselves, what does this bring to the Yu-Gi-Oh table? First of all, it's a Link 4. Its summoning condition requires quite a lot of monsters. So again, it needs a lot of investment. That's one thing. So when a player is playing with Boral Lord Dragon, not only do they need to uh, have a lot of investment, they need to know why they're going into this card do they have space in their extra deck to go into this card as it requires a lot of investment and again you need to have a monster on your side of the field that can go into defense mode so making uh, multiple link monsters is not really the way to utilize the full effects of Boral Sword Dragon so resource management and extra deck allocation are important uh, important vantage points that you need to know in using Boral Sword Dragon. Okay, you're with me so far? Let's go and talk about Boral Savage Dragon. Boral Savage Dragon is a Synchro 8. Now again, Boral Savage Dragon, many can say that, oh, this is just a generic negate. Yes, it is. But before you start to, to uh, you know, uh, you know, flame me about, you know, the genericness of Boral Load Savage Dragon, we must first look at it and discover why it is healthy and why it is balanced. First of all, if you would just make a Boral Load Savage Dragon and Synchro Summon into it, well, it doesn't do anything unless you have a Link monster in the graveyard. This is important. When using Boral Sword Savage Dragon, you get to learn some valuable lessons, some valuable lessons that can differentiate whether you are a uh, learner of the game, whether you are a new player or a master. Using Boral Load Savage Dragon effectively means that you understand resource management, you understand extra deck allocation, and you also understand um, whether the consistency of whether your card, your deck needs it or not. You ask questions like, okay, so if I'm making a, uh, you know, am I going to be making a link monster in my deck? Um, do I want uh, Boral Load Savage Dragon to have one negate, i.e. with a link one, or two negates with a link two? If it's an Omni negate, how many, how much am I going to delve? How, how you know, what link am I going to delve into so that I can use uh, Boral Load Savage Dragon to its maximum effect? What is the best links to go into? Is it link one, link twos, link three, link fours? What do I go into? If I'm synchronously summoning Sav uh, Boral Load Savage Dragon, do I have the correct tuners in my deck? What am I doing? How is my deck constructed? How, uh, what are the scenarios that I, uh, when I face my opponent, I'm going to be making a Boral Load Savage Dragon? Understand this, that when you have Boral Load Savage Dragon in the deck, Boral Load Savage Dragon isn't just a generic monster. It's a way of life, but most importantly, it is, it determines whether you are a master player or a new player. Masters play with Boralood Savage. New players play with Appaloosa. And therein lies the problem. This is why um, 
everyone hates Appaloosa because Appaloosa doesn't bring anything to the table. It is not skillful. When you make Appaloosa, right, you just need a lot of monsters. You're not putting anything to the game. You're not you're not some skillful player or some or you've thought up some strategies or you've come up with some concept or whatever. It doesn't there is no sacrifice. There is no you there's no resources that was put into it. Anyone can make an Appaloosa, right? I can get a new player on the street to go and make Appaloosa, right? But what have you brought to the table? What skillful things? How can I defend you as a card, as a concept, when you don't bring anything to the table? And herein lies the problem with Appaloosa. This is why, in my personal opinion, right, this card needs to be banned. Okay, so let me talk about a few more cards show you like the hopeless nature of Appaloosa and why it's really not good for the game. So we've talked about again Savage Dragon. How about we talk about you know one of the new negate cards we've gotten in the game from Cyberstorm Access? Bestial Dis Dis Disparta or you know as some affectionately call him the father. Again to effectively use a Disparta, you need to have a card banished. You can't just again make Disparta just for the sake of making it. You need to be skillful. You need to know why you're making this card. How are you going to be using its negates? Why you're using it? It's not just there for the sake of being there. Let's look at uh, another card that um, we've got there. We've got like one of the generic synchros that's been made again, which is Chaos Angel. Again, there's an argument that you can say that Chaos Angel is really very generic, you know, stop with the cap, stop the stop the bull crap, you know, like it's weak source. But, you know, again, making, um, you know, Chaos Angel may not be, may be the easiest thing and you may not need a lot of skill. But you need to know, are you, is it worth it to be using light or dark masters? Again, ask these questions. Are you, are you going to want to synchro summon it or not? And yes, while it gives protection from battle, it only gives protection from, from active monsters' activated effects. It's not from, you know, there's a lot of nuance there. There's a lot of uh, things that can be missed in translation with the effects. So you can't just you know, willy-nilly just slap a Chaos Angel there and win the, the game. There's more to things than that, you know? That's a, that's one example. We have, again, Kashtira Fenrir that's been released, you know, last year. Again, a lot would say that Fenrir is, you know, not a skillful card. You can just special summon it. But again, all Kashtira monsters, you need to control no monsters, right? Um, if an opponent puts a Kaiju in your side of the field or if your opponent puts a monster in your side of the field, you really can't be special summoning that Fenrir. Yes, Fenrir is can be easy can be easy to summon, but again, um it can be stopped. You can use cards such as Lancia, you can use cards such as that. It's not omnipotent, it's not a card that you can't deal with. There's loads of cases and loads of nuance for all these cards. Um Fenrir adds brings a lot into the game, brings a lot, it's a good going second card, brings a lot to the table. I can argue a lot of good points about Fenrir, I can also, I can argue a lot of uh, good points about Chaos Angel, I can argue a lot of good points about Bestial Desparta, I can argue a lot of points about a lot of cards that have come out recently that Konami's released in previous sets. Every single one of them, I can argue their case. I can tell you why these cards are useful, why we play them, right? And what they bring to the game as a whole. They bring skill, they bring creativity, but most importantly, they bring a new way to play. And they bring a different side of the game that you don't really see at all. The issue with Appaloosa is that it doesn't do any of that. Appaloosa doesn't bring any skill into the game. It doesn't bring a new way of playing. Whenever you see Appaloosa in a deck, right, that deck is usually very, very linear, okay? It's not really bringing anything new or anything skillful to the table. For example, when I see Appaloosa in a deck list, I'm not thinking that that's the, that, that deck, the, the person playing that deck is really skillful. I'm really, th what I'm thinking is that what monstrosity or what easy, what ABC are they playing now? But however, when I see a Dragon Link deck, you know, I am I respect 
the player and I respect the deck. I don't respect Appaloosa because there is nothing respectful that it's brought to the table. It's not. This is the problem. And Appaloosa always feels to me like a get out of jail free card. This is one of the biggest issues that that I have with it, and I think players have with it in the game. Just make an Appaloosa, you can deal with all the hand traps. Just make an Appaloosa, you can deal with all your opponent's monsters. Just make an Appaloosa, you can deal with your opponent. You don't need to think. Again, this is my biggest issue, and I think the biggest problem I think we have with Appaloosa as a whole. I think one of the biggest issues that Appaloosa brings to the Yu-Gi-Oh table is it stops critical thinking. For example, when you make an Appaloosa, that's it. Your brain turns off in Yu-Gi-Oh. You're not, you don't really look at your opponent. And that to me is a problem. You know, you shouldn't make a card and just forget that your opponent exists. You know, that should not be a thing. You should care about your opponent and care about the actions that they make when you make um Sa borrowed savage or borrowed or bestial despot or any of the cards i've mentioned previously in this list you can't just make them for the sake of making them not only you have there's this back and forth thinking you have to be creative when you make a borrowed um, savage dragon for example if you've not made a link earlier you could you borrowed savage wouldn't do anything if your opponent has used for example ddd crow on the link that um you know borrowed Sa savage is going to equip on summon guess what it's not going to have any negates on it there's loads and that's an example with borrowed savage but you're seeing the point here the point here is is that there's a lot of skill there's a lot of skill there's a lot of nuance there's a lot of things um in between the lines that we can talk about with all of these cards but Appaloosa doesn't do any of that there is no nuance when you make an Appaloosa there is no skillful thing that you've done when you make an Appaloosa everyone knows you know in the room that you're either making it you're either us you're either a player that's making a deck one that's just full of negates and once the board is broken your deck amounts to nothing and you are not a skillful player because you are trash discovered that negation is the next best thing and you're just making up a loser for the sake of making up a loser that's usually where you stand you're either a new player that's discovered negation or an annoying player and a disgusting player that just makes negation for the sake of making negation you're not really added anything new to the table you've not really because you are trash brought anything interesting you've You've done nothing for the game as a whole. And we've seen, obviously, in this format that we're in at the moment, that yu is in at the moment, that Appaloosa really is boring to face. I think players are sick and tired of this card. I think when we're looking at discussions, when looking at things, I think, yes, I think many players are talking about, you know, we can say Axis Code Talker. And saying Axis Code Talker is a problem, but to me, in my eyes, I don't. I think Axis Code Talker is not a problem. While yes, Axis Code Talker is very strong, and has a lot of unfair qualities. But here's the thing: Axis Code Talker, in order for it to be useful, you need to make a lot of links into your graveyard. You need to make a lot of resources, and to me, that balances the card out. Right? You're not. You don't just make an Axis Code Talker just like that no 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 no. it doesn't work like that you have to build up to it you have to make several uh you know link monsters you need to have invested into access code talker do you know what i'm saying right there are ways to stop it you could um you know banish two cards from your opponent's uh, links from your opponent's graveyard meaning that it doesn't get the boost there's many ways to stop access code talker point is access code talker is skillful whether you know you agree with that or not whether you want to start to say that access code talker is just a piece of crap i don't really think that's the case there's there's a very strong arguments of uh, access codes access code talkers usage access code talkers uh skillfulness well yes um it is pretty oppressive but you can't the argument that's very really strong on its favor is that you don't just make access code talker 
first card that you make. You have to make several other cards before you go into um, an access code talker for it to be useful. You don't just make access code talker and call it a day. It doesn't work like that. And this is the thing. There is a cost. Overall, in general, what I'm saying is, is that in in most cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, except Appaloosa when it comes to monsters, right, have a sort of cost on them. It's in there in some shape or form. And cards that don't have a cost, we're starting to see Konami dealing with them and banning them straight away, as we saw with them banning, um, you know, Sprite Elf. Yeah, definitely. We definitely thought that Sprite Elf was going to last for a year, but yeah, definitely we see that ban. But the point is, stands. Appaloosa is the elephant in the room, I think, at the moment in Yu-Gi-Oh!, it's not doing anything for the game that's positive. It doesn't bring anything good to the table. It just exists. It's just there. There is no any single good point that you can talk about with this card. No one uh, can say anything good about this card, I think, you know, in Yu-Gi-Oh! at this point in time. Name me one person that can, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, that can actually defend Appaloosa and... Uh, yeah, I'm going to be... I don't think there's anyone that can defend this card. I don't think there's anyone that can come with a logical and reasonable argument why um, you need a Palooza. Well, you could say yes, you know, it's there for hand traps. But again, as I've mentioned in this, in this video, hand traps are designed so that we can deal with problematic formats. They're designed to stop unfair things, right? That's their design and that's their purpose. And I think we need to accept that as players. Like, Dolan Lockburn, for example, is being used now. Is the format the best? No. But Dolan Lockburn and other various hand traps showcase to us, show, show us that players are using unfair strategies, that players are using... Um, plays that are not good and so they should they're meant to incentivize you to be using different strategies and be using different things if you don't want to see draw and lock but if you don't want to see these hand traps then play something else or rather do something else obviously this might turn out to be me saying like you know get good scrub but that's not the point the point is is that these hand traps that konami have designed essentially are designed so that we can as a player base really rather you know, evolve, most, but most importantly, get us out of that negative mindset. They are there to help the game instead of hindering it. And, I, and indeed, if we go with this path of where we're going, I think the game will enter a good place. And that's all I've really got to say about Appaloosa. I think I've argued, you know, its case, really, if it did even have a case, but I think I've explained the main reason why I think this card needs to go. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My faith, right, is in your hands.